Today it's a <coughs> great day because Sastrarp Day and Mother's Day have come together. That's very such uh, happening, I think. <coughs> and that is what we have to understand how Sahasrara and the motherhood go together. Sahasrara was definitely opened and mother had to do it. Because formerly those people who came on this earth tried to teach people about dharma, to bring them to the central path, to the straightforward path of ascent. They tried everything whatever way they thought was good for a particular community, particular area, particular country. They talked about it and lots of books came out of it. But instead of <coughs> all these books creating people of religious, spiritual, and a united nature created people who were all against each other. Absurd, it's an absurd thing, but it happened. So all these books that were written, all this knowledge that was given was all misused by human beings just to get their own <coughs> power, I should say. So it was all a power-oriented, also money-oriented game going on. When we see the outcome of all these religions, we feel it's all empty. They talk of love, they talk of compassion, but it all is for a purpose. It is all a political game sometimes because they still feel that they should have power, not the spiritual power but the worldly power so that they can dominate the whole world. So this domination started working so much in the human mind that we had lots of wars, killings, all kinds of things. And when it subsided, I felt that now, maybe, opening Sahasrara might help people to see the truth. At the level of Sahasrara, you know the truth. So all kinds of illusions, all kinds of misunderstandings, all kinds of self-imposed ignorance, they all have to disappear. Because what you know is the truth. <coughs> the truth is not sharp, it's not harsh, it is not something which is difficult to assimilate. People thought truth must be something that would be just uh, very uh, damaging or could be very harsh, could create problems between human beings. We should not have, we should not have. It was not meant to be. But whenever they talked of truth, the people used it for a wrong purpose. 
It's something special about human beings that they start using things for a wrong uh, attitude, for a wrong message and try to use it for their own purpose. It's such a common thing with human beings that they want to have power over other men. Now I've seen in my own country when people wanted to have separate nations. Those people who wanted to have separate nations actually did it, not to achieve anything great, but just because they can become uh, those people who want it, for few of them, they'll become something great in their own country. So they never wanted to be in a country where they may not rise to that height. So then they separated those countries. And by separating, I've seen all these countries are suffering, suffering very much. There's no growth, their financial problem, all kinds of problems are there. And also the main country is suffering because they have now developed enmity and all this is working out against the main country. So to have a separatist idea itself is against Sahaj. Say for example a flower growing on the tree looks very nice. It develops there, matures there and it produces seeds also. But supposing you cut the flower and take it away, then what happens? The tree loses the flower, no doubt, but mostly it is the loss of the flower. Now this they did, all of them, and when they did it, you see, what is the result? That <coughs> people who tried to have their own um, country, their own domain, they were killed, murdered, abused and some of them are in jail. So the attitude even outside Sahaja Yoga has shown that it doesn't help. So we must learn to be one. If t after Sahaja Yoga, after your realization, if you do not understand this message, that we all have to be one, one single unit, one single body. If we cannot be, if we are identified with other things, then it's no way you have grown, you have not matured. Very important point on Sastra Rade one has to understand that all the seven chakras have their pithas in the Sastra. All the seven chakras. They are nicely settled down in the midriff of your brain and they act through that area, wherever they are, on the chakras and work it out. Now all these seven chakras become one, I should say, or go into unison. Complete integration takes place in these centers, because these are governed by these seven main chakras, we can call them, you can call them by any name, and they govern all the other chakras and because they are in unison, completely integrated, that's why all your chakras are integrated. These are pithas which are <coughs> enlightened, I should say, by Kundalini, also blessed by the divine power, immediately become integrated. They say that like pearls in one string. It's even more than that, it's more than that. All these pithas within you get integrated in such a manner as if there is no difference in their manifestation. Supposing you have a chakra which is not uh, all right, something wrong, physically, mentally, emotionally, whatever it is, the other chakras try to help 
this Sikh chakra and try to evolve uh, a personality of a Sahaja Yogi in a way that he is integrated. Now integration within yourself is very important. Unless until you are integrated within yourself, you cannot be integrated outside. And the within yourself the integration is such a blessing of Sahaja Yoga that a person who gets this realization becomes a personality which is above the normal personality. It is not attached to all the negative forces, the destructive forces. It just gives up so many things which normally very difficult to give up. All these seven chakras that we have within ourselves are then guided by these pithas in a unique act. Just the help that comes from this unijan helps all the chakras to get completely integrated. As it is, we are not integrated because our mind goes on one side, our body goes on another side, our heart goes on another side, our emotions are different. We do not know which is the right thing to do, what is the best thing to do. But after realization, in the light of the Spirit, you get the truth and you know what is to be done. For example, after Self-realization, you can judge people on their vibrations. You don't have to use your brains for that, just on your vibrations, immediately you know what's wrong with yourself and with others. So here it is a double correction. One is you see your own being, your own self, your self-knowledge comes to you and secondly, you can also make out another person what sort of a thing he is doing. If somebody is not Sahaj and claims to be Sahaj, you can easily find out that he is not Sahaj, his behavior is not Sahaj. So best thing is for all of us is to get this integration absolutely working out within ourselves. We should not shun it, but we should accept that whatever defects we had, whatever wrong we have been doing, what wrong thinking we had, whatever destructive we had taken to, all this has to disappear because you are Sahaja Yogis. Sahaja Yogis have a special job to be done. They are not like other people who are just working for money, working for power, working for domination. You are not. You are working in Sahaja Yoga for the emancipation of humanity. So whole thing is that this Sahasrara is a global field where we enter in. We enter into a global field and when we are there, we just become ourselves a global personality. So all these minor things like your race, your country, uh, your religion and all these, which are artificial barriers between human beings just drops out and you become <coughs> a realized soul and you know what is humanity. You understand the humanity. This has to happen in all the surgeries when they are together. They should understand that we are not no more ordinary human beings. We are special people chosen for a very special work which is the most important thing today. Now as you know what is going on in Kali Yuga, I need not describe all that to you. But what is the light of the Spirit which is going to show you what you can do to remove the ills of Kali Yuga? Starting right from yourself, you just see for yourself with great amusement what you have been doing was all stupid. You should not have done that, but you have been doing, so it's all right you can forgive others who are doing it. And you'll understand that those who have been doing it have been doing all this out of ignorance. But now you have 
your sahasrara open. In the open sahasrara, you are getting, uh, or the divine is pouring its grace all the time. With that reception, with that, we should say, the nourishing of your sahasrara, what happens is something really great. One thing happens that you get detached from yourself. You can see yourself, you can see your past, you can understand yourself that you have been doing so many wrong things and misunderstanding people. This sometimes takes you too far away from yourself. But once this light comes and the sahasrara is nourished, in that light you see clearly what wrong you have been doing to yourself. Then as a person you can see your faults, but also you see the faults of your society where you live. I have seen immediately after people get their Realization, they start telling me, Mother, uh, I was a Christian, but see, this is Christianity. Somebody will say, Mother, I was very patriotic, but I see now what is patriotism is. Like everybody starts seeing its own <coughs> background, its own styles in which he has lived and just gets out of it. And once you are out of it, it's no more identified with you. And it's such a spontaneous happening. Only thing, you have to learn to be spontaneous. And that's what we, I find, that in search, people still though they are out of uh, this illusion, this ocean of illusion, still sometimes their one leg is still there in the ocean and still they are pulling it out and pushing it back. That should not be. That is only <coughs> because people don't meditate. Now to say you must meditate, people think it's a kind of a ritual or maybe a kind of a style of surgery. No. Meditation is for you to go deep down into yourself, to achieve all that your sastrara wants to give you, to achieve that height of detachment, of understanding, is only through meditation. So what happens in meditation is that your awareness crosses over Agya, goes above and is now stationed in the Sahasrara, in thoughtless awareness. Then the reality of Sahasrara, the beauty of Sahasrara starts pouring in your own character, in your own temperament. Unless and until you meditate, not meditate just to get well or just to feel that I must meditate, but meditation is very important for all of you that you develop your sastrara in such a manner that you imbibe the beauty of your sastrara. If you don't use your sastrara in this way, after some time you'll find sastrara will close down, you'll have no vibrations and you'll have no understanding of yourself. So very, very important thing is to meditate. I can immediately better make out a person who has been meditating and the one who has not been making, uh, has not been meditating. Because a person who does not meditate is still thinks that, oh, it's all right, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. Meditation is the only way you can enrich yourself with the beauty of reality. There's no other way, I cannot find any other way but meditation by which you rise into the realm of divinity. For example, I would say that myself, whatever I have done is this, that I have been able to find out a method how to give Self-Realization to masses. But that doesn't mean that if I give to masses, they are all surgeries, no. You must have seen whenever you have your programs, people get Realization when I'm there <coughs> and they um, come to programs for a while and then they drop out. 
The reason is they have not meditated. They, if they had meditated, they would have known what is their quality, what are they. Without meditation you don't understand what is best for you. So today is a day when you have to promise me that you will meditate every night, every evening, maybe in the morning also. Whenever it is possible, if you can go into meditative mood, you are in contact with this divine power. Then whatever is good for you, whatever good for your society, for your country, all is done by this divine power. You don't have to overpower the divine power. You don't have to order, you don't have to ask. Just if you meditate, you are one with this all-pervading power which is another great blessing to us. Unless and until your sastrara is open, all the blessings of the divine power cannot come to you cannot. Maybe you might get some money, you might get some jobs, you might get this and that, but your own development is only possible when you meditate and your sastrara is completely open and open to truth. <clears throat> now the truth is that this divine power is compassion, is love. This is the truth. They say God is love, God is truth. So the equation has to be made that truth is love and love is truth. But it's not a truth that as you have for your own children, you have for your family, attached, attached love is not truth. If you are attached to somebody, then you never see the bad points of that person. If you are angry with somebody, then you can never see the good points of that person. But it's a complete detached love and that love is extremely powerful because whenever you project that love to anyone, you will be surprised, the problems of that person will be solved, his personality will improve, everything will work out in a very big way and his life will be changed. But if you are attached to anything whatsoever, that Attachment itself causes problems and doesn't allow Sahaj to grow. This attachment <coughs> could be any kind. For example, you can be attached to your country, to, attached to your society, attached to your family. It can be of any kind. But when Sastrara is open, you learn one thing is detachment. It just happens that you get detached. Though, I mean, you are not running away. As it is in Sahaja Yoga, we don't believe in people who run away from society and go to Himalayas or that I call up as escapism. That is not the point. What happens is that you are there, you see everyone, you watch everyone, you know everyone, you are close to everyone, but you are a detached person. It's a state of mind that you achieve when Sastra rises up. Then that state you <coughs> you are dealing with people, uh, you are dealing with problems, you are dealing with situations, but you are not involved in it. There's no involvement and that involvement which you had before can never give a complete insight what is happening, what is the truth is about any situation. So this detachment helps. The greatest thing of the detachment is that you are not affected. No use saying that, oh, you are not affected, Mother, so <coughs> how can you feel for another person? How can you have <coughs> compassion for another person? Because if you feel for another person, then only you can solve the problem. But this feeling that you have is again a kind of an attachment. It is not a real 
uh, feel it because it doesn't help. The person is crying, you are also crying. The person is trouble, you are also in trouble. And this does not help that person, nor will it help you. So uh, to have detached in no way means you do not feel the another person, you do feel. You feel the agony of that person, the trouble of that person, of the whole society sometimes and of the whole country. But that your feeling is so detached that the all-pervading power takes over. First we must have full faith in the capability of this all-pervading power. As soon as you are detached, you say, you do it, finished. Once you say that, you are going to do it, it's you who is going to do it. Whole thing changes completely because you transfer all your responsibilities, all your problems to this, this divine power which is so powerful, which is so <coughs> capable, uh, which can work out anything. So when, whenever you think that this problem you are going to solve, you are the one who is going to do it, then all right, the divine power says, all right, try your luck. But if you can really put this problem to the divine power, it will work out. We have all kinds of problems in Sahaja Yoga, especially when we find that uh, people are not so much attracted to Sahaja Yoga, they are few in number, then you feel very bad about it. But have you tried to meditate on this point and have you tried to put this problem to the divine power? Why should we worry? when we have divine power available through our sastrana, why should we worry, why should we think about it? Just leave it to the divine power. If that is possible, if that you can achieve, you see, which is very difficult for human beings because they live with their ego, they live their, their conditionings. But if that attachment to all these things goes away, then what you do is, just leave things to this power. Krishna has said in his Gita, Sarva dharmanam parityajya mahamekam sharnavaj. Forget about all your dharmas. Dharmas means he means meaning that we have a dharma of a wife, of a husband, of a uh, member of the society. All of them have their own dharma. But he says, leave them and leave it them to me and I'll manage. This is it we have to learn, is to say that it's this divine power which will solve our problems. As human beings, it's a very difficult state and this state only can be achieved through meditation. But I'm not saying that you go on meditating for hours together, not necessary, but with full faith in yourself and in the divine power. If you work it out, I'm sure, it's not difficult to rise to that state of consciousness. That is what we have to achieve. It's possible for men as well as for women. They don't have to think, how can we mother do it after all? See, all such people are no good for such. Those who have <coughs> diffidence about themselves cannot do anything. But those who are surrendered and those who think they can do it, can manage all <coughs> uh, this transfer of their uh, power to the divine power. Just put it on the divine power. Now suppose it, I have a car which can drive me down. So if I have a car, then I don't put bullocks on it, that, that I don't push my car, I just sit inside and use it. In the same way, if you have this great power around you. If your sastrara is absolutely, completely submerged in it, then you will be amazed how things work out for yourself. <coughs> I will give you an example of Sahaja Yogi, he is no more now. He was a fisherman, ordinary fisherman, but also he was educated, so he was working in a bank. This one was going one day, to do some Sahaja Yoga work and he had to go by boat. 
So when he came out, he saw the whole place was clouded and it was about to burst out into a big havoc. So he got very much uh, perturbed about it, that, what is this? Immediately his sastrala was so open and good, immediately he said, now I leave it to this divine power to stop all these things happening. I don't want it to rain and to have any problem till I come back home and go off to sleep. And it was surprising, people told me that, Mother, the clouds and everything were there all throughout, but it did not rain, did not uh, do anything, and there was no chaos of any kind. He went to another island where he had to go, he did Sahaja Yoga and came back. And then when he went to sleep, then only everything started pouring down. So nature, everything, every leaf, every flower, everything is worked out through the divine power. So we should not have our ego that we can do something ourselves, we can manage ourselves. Once you have that kind of a thing, you are not yet that much developed, you are not that much grown up in Sahaja Yoga. But to grow up in Sahaja Yoga should not be difficult for you because you have guidelines. Those people who got their Realization, very few of them, like Sufis and we had some saints in India, all of them, how much they must have struggled? Nobody to guide them, nobody to help them, nobody to tell them about what they can achieve. And this, despite that, they, they were very satisfied people, very happy people and they worked it out so well. They saw the whole world, with another angle, as you can also see, but they were not upset and they had such self-confidence, they had such uh, knowledge of their own that they achieved through their meditative process. And the way they have written books, some of them are so great, it's very surprisingly how they have achieved these great verses such full of knowledge. One cannot understand that they had no guidance, nobody was to tell them. But one thing with them was that they always tried to look after their sastrara. Now one thing is there obstructing sastrara is the movement of your agya into thoughts. That's the only thing that's the only thing that stops your entry into Sahaja Thoughts are coming <clears throat> all the time because a human being is born who reacts to everything. React to this and react to that and the thoughts come in and thoughts go. There's a big crowd of thoughts. Because of that your attention cannot cross over Agya and can reside in the Sastra. So first of all, one should see ki what sort of thoughts are coming. You have to condemn yourself sometimes. You have to say, what nonsense, what have I been doing? What's the matter with me? How could I do all that? Once you start doing that, these thoughts will start disappearing. These thoughts are coming from two angles, one from the ego and another from your conditionings. And these are so much built up within you, that they don't allow your agya to be crossed. That's why we have two bija mantras of amksham. First one is, when it is conditioning, you are endowed with this kind of a fear, I shouldn't do like this, I shouldn't do like that, is not allowed, that is not allowed. That's the conditioning part of it. Conditioning can be of many types, but the ego part of it is that I must overpower everybody, I must get this, I must um, be able to rule everyone. These two things are there in the mind which are all the time crossing. So it's important that we should go into thoughtless awareness. And that thoughtless awareness is the real uh, way that your sastrara can be nourished by the Kundalini. Because Kundalini cannot go through, cannot pass through and for that 
as I said, there are two Vijay mantras, is one is Ham, another Raksha. So if you are conditioned, you are frightened, you are afraid and you had ideas about yourself. These days, the way people are describing, they'll say, I'm an extrovert, somebody will say, I'm an introvert, somebody will say, uh, I, I'm uh, hippie, I'm that, I'm that, all kinds of things they can have attributed to themselves. But these ideas are all coming from outside, they're not from inside. To get to the inner side of yourself, to the subtler side of your being, you must allow the Kundalini to go through the Agya. To cross the Agya is a very important thing in modern times and for that you have to meditate. If you can meditate with complete faith in yourself, this Agya can be opened up with surrendering to the Divine. You have to surrender yourself to the Divine and when this Agya opens, you'll be amazed your Sahasrara is just waiting to transfer, to give you all the help that you need through the all-pervading power. Your <coughs> connection of Sastrara with the all-pervading power is established and by that you'll be amazed how all these seven chakras work for you, how they help you, how they try to give you whatever is the real knowledge about everything. This real knowledge that you get is very joy-giving. You can see this real knowledge in everything. You don't have to uh, start reading any book about it. In every situation and in every person, in every flower, in every natural uh, happening, you see clearly the hand of the Divine. Once you see the hand of the Divine, your ego start disappearing. Once you say that it's you, you do everything. Kabira has said something great about this. He said that when the goat is alive, it goes on saying, I am, I am, I am, I am. I am. But when it is slaughtered, and its intestines are made into strings which are used for cleaning the cotton, then it said, Tuhi, Tuhi, you are, you are, you are. See, in this symbolic way, they have suggested that you have to become the… dissolve into this divine power. It's the divine power that does everything. What am I? I was just a drop. And I fell into this ocean of awareness of the Divine Power and that is taking over and working it out. That will help you a lot uh, to be a great surgeon. You develop curing powers but still you are not proud of it. Uh, you developed, of course, awakening powers, you are not proud of it. You develop so many creative powers and you are not proud of it. You become really very, very creative, extremely creative. But the greatest thing happened to you that you become a global personality. So you start seeing the problem of every country, of every other nation where they have problems. But these problems when you see, you don't see like other people because others may like to use it for their own purpose, maybe for media, maybe for something. What you want to see is that these problems are solved. See, the, your powers are so great with their… this kind of a mind, I would say, which is dominated completely by the divine power, that it… whatever disturbs you immediately is taken over and it starts working out. Many, many problems have been solved by surgery and also they can be solved on a very universal level. If you are a global person, if you are a global person, then what happens is that you become a sort of a vehicle uh, or you can become like a channel for this divine power to act because you are purely a global personality, not attached to this, attached to that. 
but a pure Sahaja personality which can be used by this divine power very easily. For that, as I told in the afternoon also, that we have to be careful about few things that we have. Firstly, anger. Anger is the worst thing that we have. Angry for what? There are people who talk like this, I was very angry. They're proud of their anger. Anger is a sign of complete stupidity, absolute stupidity. There's no need to get angry with anyone because by anger you don't solve the problem. With anger you spoil yourself, with anger you ruin your own, own nature, with anger you really spoil the whole situation. So no use, no use having any anger about anything. But if anything happens that angers you, you should settle down and see for yourself why is it wrong, why is it disturbing you. Your seeing itself will help this problem to be solved. You must first of all realize that you are a special personality, that your sahasrara has been opened out to this all-divine power, as if you are entered into the uh, realm of divinity. You are great uh, guests in that great uh, court of divine domain. You are not an ordinary person. And so once you understand why you have Sahaja Yoga and why you have got Realization, is that there's something special. But that should not give you any ego. It's not for ego that you have to have this, but it's for understanding that you have to play into the hands of the Divine. It is, this play is something I could explain like this, that if you are supposing an artist, then in the hand of the artist is the brush and the brush is never thinks that it is doing anything. It's the artist who is doing everything. In the same way, when you are one with the Divine power, you just feel, I'm not doing anything. It's the artist who is doing. It's the artist who is managing. And who is the artist? Is this Divine power which loves you, which cares for you, which looks after you, which absolutely is identified with you. You'll be surprised, I've got so many uh, letters from people how Sahaja has helped them, how at the right moment they got the help, at the point of complete uh, destruction, how they were saved. So many people have written to me, but I'm not surprised because if you are one with the Divine, it looks after you. It has all the powers, all the powers, only one power it doesn't have, to control you. If you want to ruin yourself, it gives you freedom, complete freedom. If you want to ruin yourself, ruin. If you don't want to accept divine power, all right, don't accept. It's a complete freedom to do what you like with yourself. That is one thing it has given and that's why you must curb down that freedom and respect the Divine Power. Today is, I like the day uh, when it is a Mother's, uh, I should say Mother's Day also, because I think only a mother can work it out that way. One has to have lots of patience with people. What I've seen about all these great incarnations who came, they just disappeared uh, in a very short time they lived, very short time. Somebody was crucified about twen thirty-three years of age, somebody took a samadhi at twenty-three years of age, because I think they couldn't bear the way people were stupid. They couldn't see the point that they could do something for human beings. They lost their confidence, I think, or maybe that they thought it's useless to work for these people. Like that, they took a position that is better to disappear. But mother's position is different. She'll go on struggling and fighting for her child. She'll f fight it out to the last to see that the child 
gets all the benefits. And this patience and this love and this forgiveness is innately built in a mother. She, because her attitude is very different. Not any achievement, not any uh, big name or a, what you call, a sort of an award or anything. It is just she does it because she is a mother. And that is what is the sign of any mother. If she's a real mother, at least for her own children, she will go all out, she will work out everything for day in and day out and try to save the child from disaster. But Sahaja Yoga is a much bigger family and for that you really had to be worked out through the mother's principle. You cannot take any other principle. Like they were very great uh, warriors we had and they have done a great job also and uh, they have worked out as warriors. Then we had some who were very sacrificing. All kinds of people there were, they worked very hard to establish dharma in people, but they could not. I thought of one thing, that no use establishing dharma. First of all, give them realization. When in the light of the Spirit they see what's wrong, they become dharmic automatically. The best way is to do that, not to force dharma on them. Because you put dharma on them, they don't know how to bear it, they can't digest. So this will be the best way, is to just uh, make them aware of their spirit. Once the light of the spirit comes, in the light they see everything clearly, then no problem is there. And that's why this mother's quality is very helpful. I mean, in every country there has been a manifestation of the mother principle in every country and it has been depicted and said. But later on uh, it was taken over by people who didn't want to talk about mother because they could not justify themselves the way they were behaving. So they said best is not to talk of the mother. Also those who were very much advanced people, very matured, who were really incarnations, did talk about the mother all the time, but still talk was talk. Now this has to work out as a mother has to work. So in your own way when you are doing such, there also you have to be a mother more mother's quality than the father's quality, that there's no ambition, there's no competition, there's no jealousy, nothing. Just you want your children to come up and to grow in their spirituality. If that is the only attitude we have, then you'll be amazed how satisfied you'll feel because this is a very, very joy-giving thing to see people growing in spirituality, not only talking about it, not only reading about it, but actually happening, actualizing within us. So this quality is very helpful and that really helps every surgeon to be patient, to be kind, to be humble, but you have to correct also. But there's a way of correction of another person, of people who are coming not from the divine world but from the normal world. So it's a difficult task to correct them. Some people are so hot-tempered they can't bear it, doesn't matter, you have to forgive them. But best is to concentrate on people who are simple, who are loving, who are affectionate and then gradually all these complicated people also will join. Your way of dealing with others has to be motherly. The motherly relationship has to be there. I was, I was surprised that in the Western literature I don't find any description of a child and a mother's relationship. It's very surprising. There's no, no description at all how the mother sees the child, how he walks, how he falls down, 
then he, how he gets up and how he talks, all kinds of beautiful things as described. But not in the Western countries, I don't know, they never saw this point, I think, that is very important that to describe the attention of the mother, how she is loving, how she is kind, how she tolerates so much nonsense and how she keeps it in as a sort of a forgiving thing, not just to use it against the child or to trouble. Sometimes you have to correct, you have to tell, but at the right time, at the right place, if they are told, the, the child also sees the point, whatever is there. The first most convincing thing is the affection and the love of the mother. She goes on forgiving and giving that assurance that I have a mother, nothing can happen to me. And this assurance works very well. But the same assurance you have to give to other Sajogis who are getting realization from it. Let them feel that you are not angry with them. They are stupid, I know. They are sometimes violent. I have gone through all kinds of people. But only thing that has worked is Pure love, pure love has no uh, attributes of expecting something. You just give love and try to improve that person with full attention. But in divine work you don't have to get attached to that person. Supposing there's somebody who is not up to the point, is also troublesome, gets angry with you, annoyed, insults you and everything. So forget it, there are many others, there's no need to run after one person to get attached to that person or to make them fail. Now, main thing is that I feel all the Sajogis always feel that I'm their own, which is a fact. Whether I talk to you, whether I meet you or whatever it is, you have to know that I'm your mother. And any problem you have, you can always tell me. But sometimes the way people tell me problems also, I feel how low they are. Their mentality is so low. What are they asking me? Supposing you go to some king and ask him for, say, half a dollar, then what will the king say? What is the matter with this person? He doesn't know what he should ask for. In the same way, one feels that way that when you are asking anything to your mother, it should be of some value, some great value. It should have the value of complete satisfaction. When you ask for something, it should give you complete satisfaction. But I've seen people asking for this thing, for that thing, for I mean, it's to such an extent that I sometimes feel, oh God, how am I getting all these people around me? who are desiring something very low, very mean, very uh, insipid. But if you are one with the Sastrala, then Sastrala itself works. It will bring you contact with people, in contact with such people that you are amazed how it works. I went to Turkey and my experience of Turkey has proved that beyond doubt. I never expected, but the Turkish people of all the people of the world have taken to Sahaja Yoga just like a windfall. Can't understand how they have accepted me. And there were at least two thousand people in the follow-up and people were finding it impossible to get them round and tell them. And when they had very close meetings also, they had so many people and they continue to be there. Now, maybe that is a very disturbed country with fundamentalism very much working out, but everywhere, every country has problems and has, uh, we should say, a kind of a uh, very destructive image. Every country has, but in some countries, I don't know how it sparks, and once they become Sahaja Yogis, no problem. 
It's no problem about anything when they are Sahaja Yogis. You see, you don't have to tell them, they themselves work it out, they understand it, what is it. Like we have every country which has problems, which has people who are not of a very great level, who are not great seekers. Maybe in some countries I feel those who were great seekers are lost. Like England I feel that all the seekers are lost by drugs, hippies are all nonsense. America is the worst of all, which is so much lost into wrong seeking. And uh, it's difficult to find people there who have right seeking. Gradually it is working out. But still I must say, we should not think of any one particular country where Sahaja Yoga is not working out so much or in some places working out so much. It is what we have to think globally that Sahaja Yoga is growing and you are part and parcel of that society which is Sahaja Yoga. It's a very rare society which they never had. They had one or two Sufis here and there, one or two realized souls here and there who only suffered all their lives they were tortured, nobody looked at them. I had great hopes about Maharashtra, but I'm so disappointed because they tortured all these great saints all throughout, so badly, in such a mean manner that I think they are still paying for it. And despite the fact I've done so much work there, what I feel is that their karmas are not good because they still I would say, it's a rotten country, it's become so rotten. You can see that the way people are behaving, the whole thing is so bad. Though Sahaja Yoga is there, no doubt, but I wouldn't say it is of that level as it is in the north, north of India. Very surprising, North Indians never knew anything about Sahaja Yoga. They were not such religious people either. But how the north people have taken to Sahaja Yoga, it's very surprising. So you can't say where the light will show, just can't say. And wherever it shows, we should accept, wherever it doesn't show, we should not feel bad about it. What can you do? You cannot sort of break their heads for sastrara. Their sastrara has to be opened up. And with your motherly love, with your motherly understanding, I'm sure you can do it. Not, may not be to the same extent, in every country. But I'm sure as I ha feel that maybe the punyas of these great saints will work and maybe wherever I felt little bit uh, disappointed, I feel that all these places will work out and Sahaja Yoga will grow. But first and foremost is your sastra. Only your sastra can reflect the light of the devil. So your sastrara is extremely important. You must meditate to enrich your sastrara, to cure it, to make it completely nourished by the Kundalini. There's no need to do many rituals, but meditation and also little bit of taking bandhan even now today is necessary, I think, uh, <coughs> when you go out, because still uh, Kali Yuga is working its own pangs and the Satya Yuga is trying to come out. We are the ones who are going to support, look after the Satya Yuga. And that's why the Sastra uh, opening is very, very important. It's very important and those who want to grow should meditate every day whatever time you may come home, maybe in the morning, maybe in the evening, any time, but you will know that you are meditating when you can get into thoughtless awareness. Then you will know. Your reaction will be zero. Look at something, you'll just look at it. You won't react because you are thoughtless. You won't react. When that reaction is not there, then everything you'll be surprised is divine because reaction is your agas problem. Once you are absolutely thoughtlessly aware, you are one with the Divine. So much so that Divine takes over every activity 
every moment of your life and looks after you and you feel completely secure, one with the Divine and enjoy the blessings of the Divine. May God bless you.